Hi, how does culture affect public speaking? Have you ever stepped into a room and felt the, some kind of shift with the energy in the room because of something somebody said? This is a shift because of the culture of the room. As a speaker, it's important for you to understand the power of knowing the culture of the people you're speaking to, as well as the environment in which you are. Depending on the state, the region, the country, all of these things matter and culture can truly affect your public speaking. I'm Jason Hewlett. I'm excited to talk to you about this topic. This is a unique one, and so I appreciate you being here. Let's dive in. So depending on the audience and where you are in the world, things are going to feel different if you aren't aware of or have done any homework on the culture of the audience and the area in which you're speaking. I can speak very strongly to this subject because I come from what is considered the absolute most conservative state in the United States. And it's been interesting to grow up in this state and to come out of this state and speak in other places around the world because I've found that uh, I'm extra conservative, obviously, in the things that I say and do, and so I'm extra sensitive to it wherever I go. I make sure that I know the customs, the culture, the rituals, the history of every single audience that I speak to in every place, and I'm very sensitive to that. And I just don't want anyone to ever feel offended. I want everyone to feel comfortable, and I want them to realize that I respect their culture, their values, and where they're coming from. You can feel a tangible effect and difference when somebody has not done that homework. It is a tragic experience when it goes poorly. But when somebody has done their homework and they're not of that region, state, or belief system or culture, the audience loves them even more. So here's some tips and tricks as to how to make sure that you're truly immersed in understanding the culture before you speak at an event. So if I may, I'm going to read the definition of culture. The definition of culture and its relevance in communication is this, the customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. So cultural dimensions might be individualism or collectivism, high versus low context cultures. Contrasting communications <laughs> between Eastern and Western. It is worlds of difference. And so knowing the definition of culture, that it really is all of the different things that the, those people have been through that obviously you're not gonna know every detail of everyone's lives, but at least to understand their history, where they're generally coming from. This is of the essence for you to do the homework on. And when I've spoken between the Western world and the Eastern world, I've had to figure out the right way in order to make them smile or laugh, in order to not offend in any way and not do anything culturally that's inappropriate. There are certain ways you use your hand and your body, and there's ways that you use your face and your mouth and your eyes and your voice. All of it matters. It comes together on stage depending on where you are. So let's talk about cultural influences on presentation style. Let's talk first about clothing. All right. Think about your clothing. Uh, yeah. Think about what you're wearing because in some cultures it might be offensive to wear certain clothing. You need to ask prior if you're wearing the appropriate attire. Also need to think about your hand gestures, your way of varying your voice, your eye movements, things like that that may sound like, are you serious? Oh yeah. In certain cultures you can't look at women if they're in the audience and in other cultures you can't say certain words or else they'll be absolutely offended. And these aren't even words that might be offensive to you, but it's offensive to them. I want you to even think about hand gestures. You know, as a speaker, you're gonna be using your hands for a lot of reasons. I once saw a speaker completely lose the audience and they turned on him because he had the PowerPoint clicker in his hands and the whole time he was using his middle finger to point at everything. Unfortunately, he was pointing like this and with his hand in a fist holding the, <laughs> holding the clicker. He was using his middle finger. So he was flipping off the audience the whole time. <laughs> now this might be funny in certain parts of the country of the United States, but in the Eastern culture, they were so offended they started leaving. I was watching this going, oh man, he's flipping off the audience and they're all freaked. I'm laughing now because it was so tragic. The only reason he didn't even think about it was because he hadn't really done his homework that 
hey, you know what? It, maybe in certain parts of the US, you can flip an audience off by pointing with that finger, but no, you can't do it in certain parts of the world or they're just gonna get up and leave or start booing. Let's talk about language and verbal communication. Certain words are going to affect the way that you communicate with an audience. If you are willing to learn some of their language and you're willing to take the time to figure out some of the nuances of their vocabulary or the way that they express themselves, that's a really a wonderful thing. Now, as long as you're always doing it with utmost respect, so whether it's saying something in a different language as a thank you or as a way to just introduce yourself to the stage and say, I don't know your language, but I tried and here's my attempt. And then you say something nice. They'll love you even more because you took the time to learn more about them. It's also really important to use inclusive language. And I believe that this is true in every case, but especially when we travel around the world, using inclusive language so that we're not offending anybody, that we're utilizing the language that we know that it's going to help them to understand that we've done our homework, we understand where they're coming from, and we can then connect with them better because we're not doing stereotypes, we're not making fun of anything, we're really doing our best to stay in the middle of the road to keep it a, a place of a good presentation for everybody. So let's talk about my favorite part of this video, cultural sensitivity and awareness. Truly, I do come from the most conservative or perhaps even sensitive area in the United States, and I come from the state of Utah. Now, when you hear the state of Utah, you might have a certain image of, in your mind as to what my culture and my background might be, and you're probably correct. In fact, I come from the predominant religion and faith of this area, and for that reason, it actually helps me as a person around the world traveling because I'm so sensitive to it. You see, growing up in Utah, you're not supposed to ever say a bad word <laughs> you're not supposed to say certain things or stereotypes. You're supposed to always keep it kid-friendly. And so even though I've done comedy throughout my career, I've been a G-rated comedy person, which is a very small niche, as you can imagine. But that's also given me the most opportunity. I find that interesting. The world is hungry for that type of comedy, that type of entertainment for families. And so keeping it family friendly, making sure that I'm sensitive to all the different types of people I'm around, that's been a really helpful thing to my career. What has been tragic, however, is to watch people come from another culture into ours who has not done their homework. This can be really a train wreck. <laughs> and so if it's a friend of mine, I'll always say, and they're especially of a different religion or background, I'll say, okay, look, this is what you're stepping into. You have to be very careful because we want you to still get paid. We want you to still have a happy audience. We don't want you to offend anybody. And this is a wonderful challenge to embrace. I hope that every place that you go to, you will do your homework on that location because there are sensitivities in every single state. There are culture and stereotypes that you are going to find out about as you travel. And as you talk and ask people on the airplane or in the taxi or the Uber, in the hotel, finding out more about where you're going, it's gonna change the way that you connect with that audience. And everyone will realize that you did your homework and they'll appreciate you for it. Now, if you're really on the high end of knowing how to balance doing this well, you can make fun of it to a certain degree as long as they understand that it's coming from a place of respect. To make a joke about something because there's a difference between us is totally fine, but not in a disparaging way, in a way of respect, in a way of honoring that culture. And even if you don't believe it or like it, it's okay to say, hey, there are some differences between what you guys do and we do, and that everybody thinks that's great. And I have, because of where I come from, I've been able to speak at every type of event you can imagine. In fact, because I'm able to understand the cultural differences of each place so well due to the conservative place I come from, I've been asked to speak and perform for groups that nobody would ever think somebody would do in my case. So I am of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're known as Mormons, and you may have heard of Mormons and have whatever idea you have of them. But what I want you to understand is that that's allowed me to then be so conservative that any group can have me come and perform or speak. For instance, I got a call from a friend of mine. His name is David Glickman. David Glickman is one of the greatest humorists and speakers, a Hall of Famer, one of the greatest speakers in the world. He asked me, because he knew my background 
and he's Jewish. Like, as Jewish as Jewish can be, just like I'm as Mormon as Mormon can be, he said, my Jewish rabbi is retiring. After all these decades, we'd like to honor him. I'd like you to come and perform with him for his retirement party. <laughs> I said, you can't find a Jewish comedian anywhere near Tampa, Florida, because that's where he lives. He said, I want you to come and do it because I think it'd be so funny to have the Mormon and the rabbi. <laughs> so I got to be this performer and speaker and entertainer for this event. And we made fun of the fact that I'm a Mormon and he's a Jewish rabbi. In fact, we put together a Blues Brothers dance where we put on fedoras and glasses and we did the, the Blues Brothers together that we rehearsed. It was an epic event. It was a huge success. It was because my friend understood that I was sensitive to his culture, that I knew their values and I respect it. And so that allowed me to have one of the greatest opportunities of my career. I've also been hired by a lot of Latino groups because I was willing to learn how to speak Spanish and perform in Spanish for those groups. And so not just by showing up and saying a few Spanish words, but rather saying, I'm going to do my best to do all of this in Spanish for you. So I was learning Ricky Martin, Shakira, Elvis Crespo, Juan Gabriel, all of these different singers that I don't actually know what they're singing, but I learned it, I figured it out and performed it for them cultural awareness. They loved it because I spent so much time working on it. I'll tell you one of my favorites was when I spoke in Asia and I got to go and speak in a couple of different countries in one of the most beautiful places in the world. And at the time, just about two years before that, there was a guy named Psy, P-S-Y, who had a huge worldwide hit that everybody heard called Gangnam Style. And now this was a dance where everybody was going, Opa Gangnam Style, ah, da, 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 ah. Now, what was fun about it is that it was being celebrated all across this continent. It was a wonderful thing. I invited the audience up and we got probably too many people on stage. They didn't know it was happening, but I just said, I need some volunteers. Who's willing to come up? And they're, they're willing to if they think you're a celebrity. It was very funny. They thought I was famous. And so they came up on stage and I said, are you guys ready to dance? And they looked at me like, what's he saying? And then I said, turned on the music and it went, well, but gangnam style. And we all danced like this. The crowd went bonkers. It's a cool thing to understand, embrace, and acknowledge the culture. So this also plays into overcoming cultural barriers. There's all sorts of culture barriers we have to work through, whether it's the region that we're in or the part of the world. I know when I've performed in Afghanistan or Kuwait or these really high tension areas for wartime and other situations, I've had to be extremely careful with what I'm performing. I can't do certain music or certain comedy because it's offensive. In fact, I do a thing where I do a raptor like, like a velociraptor with my tongue out. If I do that in one of those countries, it could be really bad. So here's some practical takeaways for speakers and leaders. First of all, I hope that you'll embrace the differences of everyone and be respectful of them. Think about the culture and how important it is, the culture you grew up in that somebody knows your background, where you came from, what your people even have been through. Because when you understand that and you acknowledge it, you can work it into your presentation without necessarily touching on it to uh, like as if you're an expert, but just saying you acknowledge where they've come from and then you can continue on your presentation. I would say to continually educate yourself on culture. One of the best ways to do this is to ask questions. You know, even if you're a speaker for a living, I like to say I make a speaker as a living, but I make a life as a listener. That's a true thing. I watch documentaries as my preferred movie choice. And that's because it continually helps me to become more cultured in that sense. It also allows me, whenever I go anywhere, by asking questions to get more of an insider look at what the people there live like, what they believe, what they appreciate, what makes things funny to them. All of these things matter in assessing and figuring out how to utilize culture in your public speaking, and it does affect it. What I'd love for you to do as we wrap up this video, put in the comments some of the cultural things that you found, whether it was awesome or it was a train wreck. It's always interesting to see what people have been through, and I know you've been through some yourself. I hope that you'll share it with me and I will reply to every comment put on this video. I hope this has helped you as we've talked about culture and how it affects public speaking. Thanks for joining me.